Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're back again. Another security camera has been sent my way, this time from the folks at Imogen, and this is their Plus Cam. And when I got this thing and opened the box up, I said, oh yeah, yeah, this is just like this one from Belkin. In fact, it's identical. Uh, the Belkin camera works on Imogen software. So this came out of the same factory somewhere in China, but uh, we'll take a look at it. We'll see how they, how they fared compared to the Belkin camera, which I really wasn't crazy about. So uh, this is it here. It's on a little uh, pedestal, just like the Belkin is actually. I'll bring the Belkin out here and you can see just how identical they are. Um, it uh, is less top heavy than the Belkin was. So I think it stands a little bit better. Um, on the back, you have a power cord, um, and then you have uh, a switch here to uh, switch on the, uh, the configuration screen on the app that you download with it, and I'll show you that in a second. But, um, so basically, you flip it up to the on position here, and then uh, you have to connect to its Wi-Fi directly from your phone and configure it, and then it's on your network and it's ready to go. Now, the uh, camera has a microphone on board, and uh, the audio quality is the same as it was with the Belkin. Okay, not perfect, but you know what? It doesn't need to be all that great. Uh, and then you have uh, some night vision uh, detectors or little infrared uh, lights in here uh, to help the camera pick up stuff in darkness. And you can see uh, some night vision footage here. All right, now we're going to take a look and see how this thing works. We're going to take the camera, we're going to point it right back at you. So we'll stick it right here. And then the next thing we're going to do is pop open the app. Once you get the camera configured and everything is up properly, if you click on uh, the camera that you configured, most of the time, and I say most of the time, it pops up with uh, an image here. And as you can see, I'm turning the uh, camera around here and it's giving us a nice pan. Now, the one thing that works better on this one than the Belkin is the fact that it isn't giving you this really lousy frame rate. And uh, what you can also do, and you'll see when I hit the uh, button here, is that you can record uh, to your camera roll with it also. Now, it's a 640 by 480 camera, so this is not high definition. The Belkin camera is high def. However, uh, the frame rate is so bad, it's really useless. So um, I think this is probably the better choice. And as you can see, I'm recording here, and it's uh, generally keeping up. So uh, we can hit stop there. And then if I uh, skip back over to my camera roll real quick, uh, this is a video I shot earlier. And it keeps up pretty well. I mean, it is ultra compressed, so you're getting a lot of uh, artifacting and other things there. But uh, the Belkin camera was pretty much useless uh, when I was panning it around. So this one did uh, a little bit better than the, uh, the Belkin did at that point. Now, another thing that it can do is connect with the cloud. And it has a cloud service. Right now, it's free because they're trying to get all the kinks worked out. Uh, but eventually they're going to charge you a monthly fee for that. And what that's going to do is kind of offer monitoring. So uh, what you do is you pop into the camera. Uh, instead of clicking on the camera, you hit the arrow next to it and you get into a, a little screen here where you can configure motion detection uh, sensitivity. It doesn't allow you to kind of, doesn't allow you to set the zones that uh, you can do on more expensive cameras or some of the other cameras like the D-Link I reviewed a few weeks ago. Uh, so you, you pretty much have to deal with what you got. So if something trips off the motion sensor, even if it's in a zone that uh, you're not really caring about, it's going to send a notification. However, uh, I've been testing this for a couple hours now and moving the camera all around and I am not getting a single notification that uh, we have anything going on. And you can uh, check the events here uh, as well. And as you can see, if I click on my camera, it says there are no warnings to uh, present to me. So I'm assuming they're still trying to work out some of these issues with it uh, and kind of going from there. So, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, this is the second camera of this type that I've reviewed. I'm not all that impressed with it, mainly because uh, you need to have your, your iPhone available to even look at it. Uh, the monitoring thing didn't work for me. It might work for others, but you know, as far as my testing was concerned, I wasn't able to get it to actually pick up any monitoring events, which is kind of what uh, you want something like this for. I mean, it might be useful if you want to set up something where you just want to be able to log in throughout the course of the day and just check on a pet or see what's going on in your house. Maybe uh, it could be a baby monitor. It might work as that as well. But um, overall, I, I, you know, I just really don't see a lot of usability with this thing. But uh, if you are aware of its limitations and think it might work for you, then uh, give it a shot. Uh, this is about $10 uh, less expensive than the Belkin one right now on Amazon. Uh, so it's still, uh, this is about $90. So it just seems like a lot for, uh, for what you get. But uh, the software is definitely better than the Belkin. So I, if I had to choose between this and the Belkin, I would definitely uh, go with this one. But uh, overall, I'm really not finding all that much utility with it. This is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching.